Hi and welcome. Today I'm talking blanket weed. It is mid-February in the UK and it, it's traditionally a time now when people will suffer from blanket weed. You've almost got the perfect storm of, of uh, things lying dormant and suddenly the photo period extends, the daylight, the, the strength, the UV levels uh, increase, the nutrients increase and it can take your sort of your system by surprise if you like and the blanket weed can get on top and it can become uh, prolific at this time of year it can happen at any time of the year but it does happen more often at, uh, uh, at this time of year what i'm going to talk about today is a method to stop it so if you've got it it'll kill it how to kill it and also how to nip it in the bud as soon as it starts really before it becomes a problem what I'm going to tell you will work any time of the year, but as I say, you are more prone to it at, uh, in, in the beginning of the year. So as I touched on the, the bl blanket weed, algae, string algae needs nutrients, uh, a food source effectively. It needs certain oxygen levels, temperatures, etc. And, and when everything conspires in the weeds favour, it can quickly take over and it can grow and it can become a massive problem. Blanket weed treatments are available. Um, more, uh, the majority of the blanket weed treatments available on the market uh, are based on the hydrogen peroxide, which is a chemical, uh, and I'm doing that. We'll, we'll, I'll come on to chemicals in a little bit. Hydrogen peroxide prevents the growth of algae, inhibits growth, kills the algae. A lot of people are very fearful of the word chemical. I, you know, not all chemicals are created equal. For example, PP, potassium permanganate, very harsh chemical. Treatments for flukes, costia, harsh, all come with side effects. They're not all like that. Uh, it's a, it's a quite a broad term chemical and I, I will, I will in a minute, I will touch on why you shouldn't make the blanket assumption that chemicals are bad. I hear a lot of people who are very averse to chemicals in their pond say they do everything natural and they will only use a natural method which is barley straw. Barley straw does kill blanket weed, that, of that there is no doubt. <clears throat> and people often say, they say, I only use natural barley straw, I won't use chemicals in my pond. Now I'm gonna go and I'll explain the irony of that a little bit. With barley straw, you'll get a bale, a lump, a clump of barley straw you put it in your pond, you anchor it down so it's submerged. And over time, if the conditions are correct in your system, and that's important, the barley straw breaks down, it decomposes, basically it rots in your pond. And it gives off chemicals, ironically, as it does. And one of the chemicals that it gives off is hydrogen peroxide. So people who think it's a natural a natural remedy to blanket weed, it really isn't. It, it's just another, it's a means of generating hydrogen peroxide chemical, uh, which then kills or controls the blanket weed. Hence why a lot of the blanket weed products contain hydrogen peroxide. Now the reason barley straw works for some and people swear by it, have great success, and others think it's rubbish as it does nothing, is that the decomposition process has, there's a lot of variables, temperature, oxygen levels, the other chemicals that go into that reaction. And if those variables in your system aren't conducive to hydrogen peroxide generation, then the, ra the rotting down of the barley straw won't generate the, the, the hydrogen peroxide. It, it, it's as simple as that. So it's a bit hit and miss, let's say. But ultimately, when it's a hit, it's because hydrogen peroxide is generated and that inhibits the blanket weed. Now I want to touch on chemicals and why it's not at all correct to just say a blanket statement, I don't put chemicals in my pond. I'm going to talk about one chemical in particular to make the point to you. Okay, and I'm going to read from a sheet for this because I want to get it right. There's a lot of information and I don't want to, I'm old, so I struggle to remember too much these days. The, the, the chemical I want to talk about is hydrogen hydroxide, and there's lots of names for this. Dihydrogen monoxide, dihydrogen oxide, hydric acid, oxidane, 
hydroxic acid, uh, many names, but hydroxic acid essentially <clears throat> It's, an, it's a nasty chemical. It, it causes uh, suffocation. It's a, a strong caustic agent, so it accelerates corrosion of metals. It is literally responsible for millions of deaths over the, uh, over the world, throughout the world. It's a major component in acid rain. Uh, it's found in all excised tumours of cancer patients. Contributes to the greenhouse effect and it can cause severe burns. So as you can obviously see, not, an, not a pleasant chemical at all. Um, and the point of this rambling is, the list of those chemical names, there's one more that I missed off, and that one is the one we use more often, the one we know it by more commonly, and that is water. So as you can see, water is a chemical, it's in the right conditions, a, nat a nasty chemical, causes suffocation, it's a key ingredient of acid rain, etc., etc. So the point is, not all chemicals are bad. If, and, and to say you don't put any chemicals in your pond, I can absolutely guarantee you do, because you wouldn't get very far without water in there. The chemical formula for water, H2O, hydrogen, two, oxygen, uh, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom combined to form a molecule of water. And hydrogen peroxide, the chemical that I'm talking about today that uh, for, for curing blanket weed. H2O2, so as you can see, very close. Um, but in this case, two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, so effectively twice as much oxygen. And hydrogen peroxide is a strong uh, oxidant, so if you put it in your pond, it will boost the available dissolved oxygen for a few hours. So useful for if you have an air pump go out, or if for any, whatever the reason you've, you're short of oxygen in there, a very quick fix is to add hydrogen peroxide. It's used to neutralize PP. So if you ever use potassium permanganate, it's pink when you first put it in it slowly goes brown as it's oxidized if you have it if your fish have an adverse reaction if for any reason you want to stop that neutralize the the pp quickly add hydrogen peroxide oxidizes it up clears it it makes it uh, safe instantly hydrogen peroxide is used in uh, sewage treatment it's used to treat to remove sewage uh, sludge and organic waste from water so adding it to your pond will have the same effect. It will it will remove sludge, uh, remove break down organic material because it's a strong oxidant. So lots and lots of good positive benefits to hydrogen peroxide, as well as the one we're talking about today, which is in the treatment of blanket weed. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know uh, a couple of two big things for me. Consistency is one. Consistency in everything you do in pond keeping is key. So uh, with the treatment of blanket weed, and this applies to however you treat it, it, if you've got a lot of blanket weed, if it's got hold, there's tons of it in there, the worst thing you can do is really dose heavily and kill it dead. You'll cause yourself all manner of problems. It tips the balance of your ecosystem. It, it you know, blanket weed uses oxygen. It, it does various things. You kill it dead, you could block your filters up, you'll, you'll tip that balance and it can be many, many months to get it back again. So the key is to do it gradually if you've got a lot of blanket weed. That, so that's one thing. Another key thing for me is observation. Uh, it's so important that you observe your fish a lot, daily, multiple times a day if possible. The, the only way you'll know if something is wrong is to know how your fish behave when, some, when everything is right. And if you're doing that, you will spot blanket weed very early on. So you'll see the very fine sort of green fluff starting to form on the palm walls. And it's at that point that you need to nip it in the bud. The way to do it, ah, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, uh, this is the stuff I use. So this is 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide. I get this from um, www.apcpure.com. I actually buy it via eBay. As I say, this is the 3% stuff, food grade stuff. That's a five 
litre uh, container. Now, dosage-wise, dosage I use and I recommend is one litre, 1,000 mil, to 1,000 gallons of pond water. So, locally, my pond is 1,000 gallons, so I put in one litre as, as a single dose. So, handily, again, five litre container, five individual doses of one litre. Pour them around the surface of the pond, spread it about. That will inhibit blanket weed growth. So put, the, put a dose in when you see it forming, monitor. Again, the key is monitoring. It's not something that has a very strict treatment regime uh, because, you know, it's very, very difficult to overdose or, or do any harm. It, it is a very safe uh, uh, chemical. Put it in, observe. If, if it dies back, you know, add another dose by all means, or if it, if it uh, continues to grow, then again, redose. Do this when you need to do it. Um, as I say, you, you'll have other benefits from doing this, but it, it, it isn't something I would suggest as a, a preventative treatment, let's say. It, it's to react and use your common sense and react to what you have in front of you. I'm not, I don't believe in preventative treatments. You can't kill what isn't there. If you have no blanket weed, don't put any in. There's no, there's no benefit to that. But the time to add it is when you see it starting to form and to, you know, nip it in the bud. I hope that was useful for you. Do, as always, leave a comment below. Let me know how, how your success using hydrogen peroxide for blanket weed treatment. Um, do subscribe if you haven't already. And, and thank you for watching. All the best. Yeah.